Now, before we get too far into this video, I want you to let me know in the comments below. Like, pause it now before we go any further into this. I want to get a a view from you guys. Let me know, how do you choose your purchases? Is it based on return on investment or return on creativity? Combination of the both. Let me know below because I'd love to know. I, I really do find this interesting and I, I love the community we have here and it'd be great to hear your insight because otherwise it kind of feels like I'm shouting into an empty box, which is not as much fun. One of the problems with being a photographer is that it's a business and it's also a creative pursuit. So in the area I work in, I work as a, a commercial photographer. I work at a reasonably high level. Um, I'm by no means the next rank in, but I am shooting big jobs nonetheless. And our work comes into like a weird category. We have to do a lot of personal projects. And these personal projects get us the commercial jobs that we actually have no say over whatsoever. And we act as technicians. So it's creative to get the work and it's business to do the work, which is a weird, weird concept. But with that come some bizarre purchasing choices. And I'm going to talk you through what I do. This is not business advice. This is just how I view things. Now, let's talk about kit and let's talk about buying kit. And the two reasons you might want to buy kit. One is there will be a return on investment. And this is very hard to quantify. But for example, the camera I bought this here for doing this jazz here on is a what is it called? It's a black magic pocket cinema camera. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It's 6K. And it's got a nice lens on it. It's pretty sharp and detailed. It's 6K. These are only 4K videos I upload. And my workshops I do, they're only 1080p. So it allows me a lot of creativity in terms of punching in recomposition, different angles from the same 6K shot. Very useful. There's a return on investment on this because I can say this camera here shoots my YouTube and my workshops. They bring in this much money. So the cost of this camera has had a return on investment-ish on all of this sort of stuff here of this much. Now, of course, there's more bits to the whole thing. Than, you know, there's my time, there's the, the ideas, there's the microphone, there's the light, all this other stuff as well. But you can sort of make sense of it. Now, this lens I'm about to potentially purchase which is the Mamiya Seco Z 110 2.8, which is a, a beautiful lens. I don't need this lens. I've got a 100mm Prime sat over here doing nothing. This is my, that's my Zeiss Milvus Macro Planner, which is currently an overly engineered negative scanner, uh, which is totally overkill. And we'll get to that in another video. I've also got the 90mm Mamiya Seco. So I've got two lenses nearly at 100mm. So I've got the Canon 100mm. I like 100mm lenses. I don't need this. The, this this will not make me any more money, but it is a beautiful lens. It has a beautiful rendering, and visually it does something which the others don't. Same with the macro planar back here. This has a a particular rendering, especially of highlights that the Canon lenses just do not have, uh, and no other lenses for a Canon camera. Um, and this is the same for the Mamiya setup. Like the ninety to one hundred ten is, is negligible. The two point eight on this very important for those who shoot the RZs. Um, but not for me, because like, I'm, I'm going to be at F11 anyway. So there really is no financial reason to buy this, but there is a creative reason. There is a look, there is an aesthetic, and I need to decide whether I can justify the 1000 to £1,500 on this lens for that aesthetic. Will it make me any more money? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe over time that aesthetic will become something which works for me. But really, is anyone going to know the difference between a planner, a secor, and a Canon, really? Will they on a billboard? No, absolutely not. On Instagram, <laughs> I really doubt it. Zoomed in at 100% on my monitor back here. This is my editing monitor back there. Yeah, probably, probably they could, if they knew what they were looking for, but other people who know what they're looking for, i.e. photographers, my clients, yeah, no, not so much. So this is an emotional purchase. Also, one of the reasons I like it, listen to this. That is the aperture blades. I wish modern lenses had these still. And that might sound like a stupid reason to drop £1,500, but these things do matter. There is, being in the creative, it, it, it does matter that you enjoy using your equipment. And I used to really underestimate this. I shot on the Canon 5DSR and the Canon 100mm lens for years. There is nothing exciting about that setup. There is nothing that makes you go, yeah, I want to shoot this with that setup. It, it has none of that. Whereas this, this little baby. This is all the good stuff. Look at this. 
That is an exciting camera to use. It's got the clunks, the winding, it's got these beautiful aperture blades and not as nice as the Mamiya ones, I'll be honest. This, this is a poor man's Hasselblad. This is the Bronica ETR SI. This is my first ever camera. This, let's get it in focus. This is, I love this camera. This is, oh, lovely. Nice bit of kit. Look at that, got a nice little viewfinder. It's got it all going on. This is beautiful to use. That Canon setup was not, let me put this away before I break it. We're gonna, we've got a video coming up on this, don't worry. Or do worry if you're not into that, but. Oh, beautiful. That's a sexy bit of kit to use. That, that's got all the, all the nice feels, all the good feels, all the good stuff. And when I bought my Cambo Actus, it's got these beautiful rails. It's got the you know, nice little knobs that like fine tune it and the tilt and the swing and you get the Mamiya lenses on the front with the aperture and the noise it makes because it amplifies the Canon's shutter sound, which is nice. It does something. It makes me want to shoot. Whereas before I was literally like, here's a camera, it's basically a scanner, really. It's just like, you know, it's 100 mil, it's flat, put stuff in front of it, fire it at the computer, done. It didn't do anything. There's no tactile, like, oh, like, you know what I mean? There's nothing nice there for me. It was just a tool. And for years, I thought that was fine. That's what photography is, you know? We're just creating the image in front of it. But since changing, it has definitely had an impact in my desire to shoot, my want to shoot, my need to shoot. It really does matter, which is why I've got my Bronica out again. I'm going to do a whole video on that soon. So if you want to know about that, do, do, do subscribe. And if you don't, then maybe don't. But these things matter. So these are the two camps you've got. You've got the, yes, return and investment. Here is my Blackmagic 6K. This is not a, an interesting camera. It's just a, a sensor with a lens on the front of it. And then you've got my my camera that I use for my personal work, my commercial work. And that is an, an exciting camera for me to use. There's return and investment and there's return on creativity. And I do not know how to quantify it. And I think that is part of the thing. I think that's part of it. It's part of the plight of the creative. How do you quantify whether it's worth buying something which will not have a financial return on investment, but will help with your creativity? And a lot of you will be going, yeah, but that, that Canva will have paid for itself by now. And it wouldn't have done because I would have still made the money without it with the other camera. Spending those extra couple of thousand pounds hasn't made me get any more work, maybe. And then my work hasn't increased in quality. I just enjoy doing it more. I'm still creating good work before then. And yes, my work has got better, but it would have got better anyway. Like it was a natural progression. So these are my thoughts on the matter. And this is not a definitive answer. I am sorry, I do not have that for you. But I think it's worth having these considerations before buying it. Like is this going to make me feel like creating? And I nowadays think that that is a valid and a warranted reason for a purchase if you can afford it. Now I'm gonna have my accountant on here soon and we're gonna talk about how to work out what you can afford um, because this is something I never used to do. It's just like buy stuff and hope for the best. Um, we're gonna have a good conversation on that. So do hit subscribe if you wanna know about that as well because that'll be coming up in the next four to six weeks. Um, in the UK, we're at year end, um, not year end, we're at tax on account. So sole trader companies have to pay their tax on account at the end of this month. So she's quite busy at the moment, I'd imagine. So I've not pestered her, um, but we will be doing that soon. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, see you all soon. Next time we'll hopefully be back in the studio because the windows are done. Bye-bye.